for what yes. we shall hear, Lord God. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for the increase, Lord God. We give you, Holy Spirit, right now, Lord God, as I decrease and you increase. As even as the, your words are near and even into my mouth, that I agree wholeheartedly, I bring my whole being into agreement with what you are saying. Yes. That I be the echo of your word in the earth from heaven. That as it is above, so it is below. That I say what you say. And I lift your kingdom come as it has come. Not from without, but from within, Lord God. Yes. But we know that once we become saved, the kingdom is now within. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Glory, glory. Amen. So we continue our lesson about confession. Um, just a little recap from last week. So, we know that um, confession, um, confession is as when you're dealing with like even with law, that when you come in and make your confession, either you're going to confess um, to um, acquit yourself of guilt, or you're going to confess that you are guilty of the crime that you did, that they said that you did. So, as the word tells us, in Proverbs 18.21, that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Mm. Go all over the place. So, let us turn to um, Proverbs 18.21. I mean, yeah, Proverbs 18 and 20. Thank you. 
word that death is raised there first. Mm -hmm. That death is what we're going as in our human human beings, we're going to see death over over our life before we speak life. Mm -hmm. Because we're always so fearful, worried, anxious. Even though the word of God tells us not to be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to discuss is that it is time that we open our mouth and begin to confess what we want to see and want from our life. That our confession set our life on a course that is phenomenal and based off of the first, based off and in from the word of God. That our confession set our life up for blessings, favor, health, prosperity, victory, good welfare, and deliverance. And in the Greek, that is called suzo. S-O-Z-O, Suzo. That, that is the blessed life, the saved life, the healed life, the whole life, Amen. the preserved life, that we're lacking nothing. Suzo? Suzo, S-O-Z-O, or Suzo. S-O-Z-O. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge, declare, act here, and give evidence through the avenue of by confessing the word of God, that with our mouth, that all things are possible for us if we only believe that what the word that what the word says is definitely tangible, tangible for our life, but that it is contingent upon us opening our mouth and acknowledging what that what we are hearing in our reading, that it is so true that we that we are willing to say it. Amen. Uh, let's go to Romans ten. tells us that we live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to see what God says that is ours, if we're going to bring into existence the things that we should have, mm -hmm. it's going to take our words. It's not going to take our thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, you got some that say that, you know, that believe that they shouldn't confess because the enemy is listening. Mm -hmm. If the enemy is so powerful to stop our words, mm -hmm. where are we walking this life for then? Yeah. When the word tells us that we have power to tread upon serpents. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So therefore, it doesn't matter what he hears. Because mm -hmm. in fact, what he hears, he must be obedient and he is under the authority to adhere to what we are saying. So that is why we have to be so careful as to what we are saying. Because our words hinge upon yeah, our words hinge upon the, act, the activeness or the doing of our angels. Because just as Jesus had angels that were attentive to him, that we also have angels that are attentive to our words. Yeah. And 
so we must be mindful of who we are giving our words to. We must be mindful of who we are giving action to or instructions to. Because yes, yes. likewise, yes. just as there are angels mm -hmm. that are already children, ready to go to work for us. Yes. Amen. There's also our adversary, our accuser, mm -hmm. that's ready to bring us foul food as well. And then we're sitting around wondering where did this come from? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't want that order. In fact, thank you, Holy Spirit. The very first time when I first started eating sushi, I had no clue what I was ordering. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the menu. I'm like, hmm, this sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. I ordered it. What comes before me was not what I was ready for. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm just going, I'm ordering some shrimp. Mm -hmm. It was shrimp. Mm -hmm. Not how I thought it was supposed to come. Mm -hmm. It was a giant shrimp. Mm -hmm. Still with the body on it. Yeah. So it looked like a giant spider sitting on my plate. Mm. And I'm like, what's this? You ordered. No, oh, I didn't. I didn't order that. <laughs> She's like, you ordered. No, oh, I didn't. You ordered. But take it away. I don't want it. <laughs> so, likewise, in the kingdom, we have things that's brought before us that we say we didn't order. Mm -hmm. But ever since you ordered that, yeah. it is. Yeah. I don't want this. Yeah. No, that's yours. You ordered it. <laughs> that's good. So, we have to be careful and mindful of what we are ordering. That when the trials of life or the test of life come, it is not come to um, beat us down. It is not here to accuse us, but to approve us, to show us ready and sure. Just as with Job, that God was so confident in Job that he told the enemy, have you considered my servant Job? Now, in our mind, we're sitting there thinking, like, oh, Lord, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You just gave the enemy permission to test me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does that. Mm -hmm. As our apostle said, that if we don't know our God mm -hmm. and we don't know this word, mm -hmm. then we will not, what we're calling the devil mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. And that was a Bible thought that I kind of had with. Holy Spirit or a conversation, I was like, what is the what is how you're wanting to reveal yourself to me in such a manner, in such a way, it don't look like you, don't taste like you, don't smell like you. But it's all you. Mm -hmm. To me it smells foul like, nah, this can't be God. Ain't no way. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, because I'm trying to be so deep, I'm trying to be so smart, oh I'm like, this gotta be God. Mm -hmm. I'm going this way. I think I'm smart. Mm -hmm. I think I'm deep. Mm -hmm. And God's like, okay, have ready, my boy, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And when you're somewhere off the left field, and you gotta turn around, like, okay, God, I repent, my bad. That. that was not you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you done lost time. Mm -hmm. You done delayed yourself. You done set yourself back. And you gotta now get back on course. Mm -hmm. When from the start of Proverbs 3 5, Five through six lets us know that if we would just acknowledge him, mm -hmm. yeah. trust him with all our heart, mm -hmm. yeah. that he would just give us the right answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the song that I had played earlier by Hanson Jones Echo, he says that your word is our cheat sheet. And that's exactly what it is. It is our cheat sheet of life. Mm -hmm. That God yeah. wants us to win so bad so much yeah. that just as in school when your professor when your teachers your professors you're like you know what I want to see y'all do good y'all teach you mm -hmm. now it is so funny that even though the teacher gave us a cheat sheet there will still be some that would not even use the cheat sheet yeah. that didn't study the cheat sheet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and God is so merciful so kind so loving. He don't tell you to not only just study it, but he's like, keep the cheat sheet on you. <laughs> Give it with you. <laughs> so if you forget the answer, here it is. Even in Deuteronomy.
Deuteronomy when he's telling us, um, choose you this day what you should, whether it should be life or death. He even goes back at the end and say, I would if you choose life. He goes ahead and give you the answer. He said, just, just in case by some unknown reason, you want to choose death, or you think that's the best answer. Now, just, just go ahead and choose life this way. Amen. Just choose it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, it is not good enough alone to just read the word internally. Think the word internally. You must take another step to see another level of fruit, glory, and manifestation of God's word in, your, in our life. That we must be able to make confession, speak, confess, acknowledge, as Hebrews 11 and 3 says, the world was framed by the word of God, which God did in Genesis 1 and 3. God spoke, confessed, and saw what he wanted. As he opened his mouth and called those things that were not as though they were, according to Romans 4.17. How do we call with our mouth by confessions? But where are we calling it from? Now, as according to Matthew 3 and 2, and 4 and 17. If I could, um, I need someone to read Matthew 3 and 2. And someone to read Matthew 4 17. So now I want to go up so that, um, that we, so that we can see this from verse twenty. And when and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, "Here we here we have staying in here. The kingdom, the 
The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So not just with looking, looking around. We can see other people blessed. We can see the move of God happening. But that's not going to bring it. Neither shall they say, look is here, or look is there. It's happening in this church. It's happening at that church. It's happening at this conference. It's happening at this movement. So I can go and run around and get a word as much as I want. That still is not going to bring the level, the power, the increase yes. that God has intended for my life. Yes. Amen. Even if I'm following mighty people of God, me following them, yes. still does not bring what God desires for me to have in my life. Amen. 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 And so he says, Behold, the kingdom of and so he says, Neither shall they say that it's here or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. And Jesus goes on further to say unto his disciples, even unto us, that the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of those days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say, say, see here or see there. Go not after them nor follow them. Whereas the lightning that light, lighteth out of one part under the heaven shineth unto the other part under the heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be this day. That as Jesus was going on to talk about how he would suffer, that he was giving us that after, after his um, resurrection, we receive power. Mm. And so that that what I really wanted us to see was that 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 in the following of of men and women of God, that it's not in the following them, that we will look to see that that a time that as we have heard, while the power is near, while the power is within us, mm -hmm. we do wise to use that power. Mm -hmm. At least when that day comes, that power is no longer there. And the word of God says, um, find me while I'm present, while I'm here. Because the time will come when you will search for me, and you won't find me. And that's the sad thing that, to know that God is within us. Yeah. And the day will come that we will not find him within us. That he will be silent. evil. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. 
A substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yokes of oxen and 500 she asses in a very great household so that, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every, every one his day and sent and called for, the, for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were, were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them, them all. But Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. So here we see Job said from a place of fear. It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. So let me make a sacrifice for them. So this is what Job did continuously. This was his continuous practice of speaking from this place of fear. So let's see what see what happened when he spoke from this place of fear. Let's turn, let's go over to Job chapter 3, 1 and 2. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because we pretty much know Job's life that is that God gave permission for Job to be tested. That goes back to what I was saying earlier that that the way that we're looking for God to come, mm -hmm. we're looking for God to come in one way, mm -hmm. but he's coming in a way that's so unlike us, even as we've been learning about Peter, mm -hmm. that when Jesus was coming across the world, he was coming in such a way that they was frightened, that they didn't even say think it was Jesus. To them, in their fear, it was a ghost. It was a phantom. Mm -hmm. Like, that can't be Jesus. He wouldn't be coming over the water. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be in the very thing that looks to, to take me out. He wouldn't be in the very thing that looks to consume me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our Lord says, yeah, I'm in that. Not only is I'm in it, but I'm reigning through it. I'm walking through it. I'm walking on the very thing that you don't think that, that you can do the same, that I'm walking on the very thing that you are fearful of, that you think is going to take you out. So, Job 3, verse 1 and 2. After this, open Job his mouth. Oh, you see Job talking again. <laughs> what is Job saying? After this, this open Job his mouth and cursed his day. What he did? He cursed his day. Now we can. Now it is. We have a faithful report that God, Job did not curse his God, but he cursed his life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Job spoke and said, now, you can go through Job chapter 3 and see the whole, his whole conversation, what he said. But I want to go down to 25. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me, wow. and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Wow. So we have to be careful from which place we are speaking from, Amen. which place we are narrating from, because we know that this is the year of the narrator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what story are we telling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we telling a story of fear, mm -hmm. or are we telling a story of strength and victory? Amen. Amen. Just as Joshua and Caleb said, we are more than able to take the land. That's right. Yes. 
that the conversation that the rest of the group had with themselves concerning the giants, that the giants think that we are small. We're insignificant. But not one even went to the giant and asked that, yo, how you see me? Now they already had the conversation in here like, yo, we can't do this. We look small. We eat feet in the excitement. God's mm -hmm. looking here like, nah, we got this. Mm -hmm. as, I, as our apostle said, they break. They go get it. They go get it. Or as they would say in the streets, let's go get this money. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, where are we confessing from? Verse 15, Jeremiah 15, let's go to verse 19. Prior to that, we see Jeremiah, he was having a conversation with God. He was speaking from this place of rejection and anguish, crying out to God for his grace, his power, his strength. In verse 19, the Lord came and answered him. He said, Therefore, thus says the Lord, if, if thou wilt return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Stop right there. If thou shalt return unto me, Then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand. Because as we have learned, that they that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. Mm -hmm. So God is telling Jeremiah, he's telling us that if we will return again, mm -hmm. come back to partner with him. Mm -hmm. We're thinking that we deep. We're thinking that we're so smart that we can do it without do it without him, do it on our own. I'll give you the strength to stand. Mm -hmm. I'll strengthen your mind. Amen. Not only will you be able to stand before me, you'll be able to stand before your enemy. Yes. You'll be able to stand before your fact that, that's telling you what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you can separate the precious from the vow, mm -hmm. which means if you can separate my truth from your past, mm -hmm. then you shall be as my mouth. Amen. Not maybe be as my mouth, yeah. but you shall be as my mouth. Amen. He says, let them return unto thee, but return not unto them. I heard a word from um, Pastor Mike Jr. And he was talking about Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter, he said that Peter got away from the group. He got out of the boat. 
and he got away from the crowd. And Mike began to tell, um, speak on a very famous or um, quote that we've heard say, that you can take a person out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of them. So unless your mindset, your mentality moves away from the crowd as well, then you take, the, you take the crowd with you. So when Peter got out of the boat, he didn't take the, the, the rest of the disciples with him. When he got out of the boat, he took only with him the instruction of coming. So as he came, he came on the, on, on the premise of only that, I don't know if it's you, Lord, but I'm just going to try it out. I'm stupid enough, I'm crazy enough yeah. mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've been learning, at least ask the question. Yeah. If you don't know, be unsure, mm -hmm. ask the question and find out. Mm -hmm. yeah. You might fall, mm -hmm. but you can get back up. Because yeah. even when we see with Paul, I mean Peter, mm -hmm. he began to sink, he began to drown. Mm -hmm. But he also had enough humility, he, he also had enough sense to cry out, Lord, save me. Yeah. And right then and there, God reached forth his hand. Peter, wherefore cry you to doubt? Because mm -hmm. yeah. Peter's facts begin to speak to him. Mm -hmm. I see swells 30 feet high. Mm -hmm. It's black as midnight. I can't see nothing. Mm -hmm. These winds are howling in my ear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So his mind is probably telling him, mm -hmm. you're walking in the midst of a hurricane. Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? Are you right. stupid? Right. What are you thinking? Right. 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 Not only is that, what you currently that ain't ground, my boy. That's what he <laughs> standing on. That is what he's standing on. This you don't do. And so he began to listen to the facts. And the facts said, we gonna swallow you. <laughs> and so he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus comes and pulls him back up. Peter, why did you doubt? He was doing it. So life out with us, yeah. even in our own life, that yeah. there's times that I got great momentum. I'm making shots. Like, okay, God, and something comes and blasts me, mm -hmm. knocks me, hits me real hard, mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm sitting there. I'm trying to calculate, or as I'm upset, I'm trying to figure it out, figure it out, yeah. trying to figure it out. Okay, yeah. all right, this this hit me pretty hard. I don't like this. I need to recalculate. And as I said, I need to be Catholic. Instead of going back to, okay, God, I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't looking for this. This blast out of me out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But if you brought me through this much of a process, mm -hmm. I would continue. Mm -hmm. And that's where yeah. I'm learning that, that to have that humility, to have yeah. just that, like, okay, yeah. God, yeah. right now, I'm in an even more vulnerable place now. I don't like this place. Yeah. This place makes me feel helpless, mm -hmm. confused, lost. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm trying by all my means mm -hmm. to get this done. Mm -hmm. But I'm learning that when I'm at my weakest, mm -hmm. that's what I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. The grace only shows up when you're strong. Because mm -hmm. God will only equip himself and put himself with what you, can't, with what you cannot do. Because right. if you can do it, somebody needs to hear it. That's right. If I'm saying I got it, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> now that's it. See how this worked for you. Mm -hmm. And then after so much, so much time of spinning my wheels in the mud, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I ain't getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. I think I need a little help. Think. And so when I finally you get to that place to say, you know what? I can't do this on my own. Mm -hmm. Neither will that ever supposed to do this on my yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now Amen. grace is available. Amen. Amen. Now I can start seeing things. Mm -hmm. I can start seeing yeah. what I was always meant to see in my life. Yeah. See for my life. Receive yeah. for my life. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I realized that the pressure was never supposed to be on me. Yeah. Amen. Because Amen. at that time in my life I made a very stupid confession. Mm -hmm. It won't be done unless I do. Mm -hmm. That was my mindset that, that when I was in college or I was at my mom's, like, mm -hmm. I see something that needs to be done, mm -hmm. 
like, okay, it ain't getting done, so at least I, unless I do it, yeah. it ain't gonna get done, I need to just go ahead and do it. And, and I didn't know that in my ignorance, I took that step with God as well. Yeah. That I'm going to be yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to do it? Do it, yeah. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though Jesus said, have you not read that you are God? Mm -hmm. He didn't say that you are supreme God. Mm -hmm. You're made in my image and likeness. Yeah. You have my ability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have my ability as much as you allow it to flow through you. You are a conduit. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. like in um, electrical, mm -hmm. that the wire itself is not the electricity. Mm -hmm. It's not the power. Right. It's mm -hmm. just the conduit. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So the conduit gives oops, to mm -hmm. the power to flow through so that when we go to the light and you click it on, yeah. it's available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So unless I remain humble in a conduit for God's power to flow through, right. I will never see the power available in my life. Come on. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. I'm understanding I'm understanding now that from my place of humility, mm -hmm. that allows me to see God, mm -hmm. taste God, experience God Amen. in a way that I never did before. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so it goes back to what I said. Where am I speaking from? Is I'm speaking from a place of fear, which is low, mm -hmm. or is I'm speaking from a place of strength that I'm high? Amen. I'm high in Him, as it says. We are seated in heavenly places. And if I'm speaking from this place, mm -hmm. and not just speaking, as I believe it was James that says that, be not just a hearer of the word only. Mm -hmm. Don't just hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you, mm -hmm. but go and do what he's saying to you. Because if I'm just, just hearing, mm -hmm. my, faith, my faith is not real in mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. like, Oh yeah, I that was a powerful word. I'm, mm, I feel good. Mm -hmm. yeah. God's like, okay. Yeah. That's like when you Say if I have, have a charger, mm -hmm. I crank it, I'm rearing the engine. Mm -hmm. I look like I'm ready to do something, mm -hmm. but I ain't doing that. I ain't going nowhere. I'm just sitting there, you know, making noise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the saying? Um, making a lot of noise, but I ain't saying nothing. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm, saying, I'm saying a lot of something, but I ain't talking loud. Yeah, that's it. Talking loud, saying nothing. Sounds good, yeah. okay, but it's got no evidence, it's got no power behind it. So, so speak, speak for me now. Where am I speaking from? Either I'm speaking from a place of power and victory where I've already conceived that the work of God is already done. Or I'm speaking from fear of trying to trying to figure out where or how. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is not on me. Yeah. Yeah. And the pressure of faith is on God. Amen. So I don't be real naked right now. Mm -hmm. That I was figuring, well, should I take a second job? Because I need things to match. I need things to add up. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, Lord. When I left my job at Samsung, mm -hmm. I was doing pretty, I was making pretty good. I was beginning to see myself get that come back to where I was. Mm -hmm. Then I got blindsided in my accident. Had to start back over again. Like, okay, I'm seeing some things. Mm -hmm. But I'm still hearing the word that you're supposed to be in Canada. I'm like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be there. Okay, and start making moves that, mm -hmm. that, puts me in the vicinity of where you say I'm supposed to be, Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, as I was looking, 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 wasn't finding anything, so I'm like, okay, let me just put that on the shelf, and you'll bring me the job that I'm supposed to be in. Right. Mm -hmm. So as I'm continuing to do um, what I'm supposed to do, the desire to be more available is still there like, Lord, I want to be available. I want this time. I want this shit. Mm -hmm. So I switched my profession like, okay, I thank you that I'm more available. I thank you that I'm more ready for you. Amen. Amen. So I get a phone call. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, we like your resume. We want you to come work for us. Somebody, okay. Somebody, well, what is it going to take? Well, I'm working this shift now, so it was, so it's, <coughs> you want me to come. I go first. That's, um, that's, uh, this is my pay, so I'm not leaving with anything less than what I'm currently making. I want this. You know, okay, we can do that. So I'm leaving. And then not only that, it's okay. How do you feel about travel? Like travel. We don't like traveling. <laughs> well, we gonna send you to India. Okay. Like, now hold up. Oh. <laughs> send it to you. Send it to you. I'm coming back, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you coming back. I know. 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 I and so I received the job, I'm, and I received these blessings, and I'm like, okay, Lord, some don't seem to be adding up to me because I'm used to making my life make sense by calculating, okay, if I work this amount of hours, I know I can do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And that was the exact point. I knew what I could do. Mm -hmm. I did not allow room for God to show me what He could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because. By my time and my calculations, my overtime got me this. I knew, oh, I can handle this amount of people. I can do this. Mm -hmm. well, okay. God, you don't need me. Mm -hmm. You've already figured it out. So when I changed, when I moved into this position I'm in, mm -hmm. and to me, it didn't make sense. Logically, why am I now taking away my overtime, cutting my salary, I nearly 20,000. I'm like, Lord, this don't make sense. I'm saying, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you can't. But with me, all things are possible. Oh. And so, Amen. yesterday we came, we then we came and listened to the financial industry mm -hmm. And the information was powerful. Mm -hmm. And God began to, began to hear the Holy Spirit, this is not new to you. Mm -hmm. I've been brought this to you. Why you're not seeing what you're supposed to see? Mm -hmm. It's because of you. Come on. Mm -hmm. If you handle what I gave you correctly, mm -hmm. if you listen to my instruction, mm -hmm. you'll see what you need to see. Mm -hmm. So I just went home, wrote down the numbers. So, okay, mm -hmm. this is what my bills is. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so after taxes and tithes, this is what my take home pay is. Mm -hmm. So then I subtracted mm -hmm. um, what my bill was from my tithe and my take home pay from taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I seen my extra that's left over from them. I'm like, oh, oh, oh wow, okay, so <laughs> I actually can do this. No. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. <laughs> Turn to God in a place of humility that I can 
not only return, but I can stand. I can I receive strength. What verse you know? Um yeah, verse verse 19. Then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vow, thou shalt be as my mouth. That when I return to my place of humility, when I return to a place of saying, God, I need you. I need you. You are my strength. You are my rock. You are my fortress. You are my Jehovah God. You are my Lord and enough. And he says, okay, now you're talking about now you're saying something. Amen. Now I can begin to go and have a conversation with him. Yes. yes. Lord, what did you plan for my life? What is the course of my life? Because up until now, as I've been doing it, I've been doing it wrong. And as I said earlier from the song that I played, played mm -hmm. Echo from, by Canton Jones, mm -hmm. that he said that, God, that God's word is our cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. God has given me the cheat sheet to win at this thing called life. Yes. If I would just adhere to it and read it. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay, well we got, we got one very important scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Did I write that down? Let's go to John five. something else that I was supposed to show y'all about the scriptures. Verse 30. Verse 39, sorry, verse 39. John 5, 39. <coughs> but when you're at home, do read from verse 30, though. Because yeah. starting at verse 30, Jesus is telling us, telling us, Crowd that that paraphrasing. You don't believe me, and the Father is not in you. But you receive Moses, and and you receive the scriptures of Moses and the script and what Moses told you testifies me. But you don't want to believe it. But you believe Moses. And verse thirty nine. So he says, but you. But you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they and they are they which testify of me. That we could be in the word and still miss God. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> because we're looking for God to look a certain way. We're looking for him to come a certain way. And so when we look at the word, we're like, okay, I got it. That's what it is. Instead of being humble enough to say, God, what are you saying right here? How do I apply this to my life? Yeah. Because yeah. we'll take a scripture and we'll run with it. Because it sounds deep. It sounds good. Yeah. Just like the scripture that says, come and buy without, buy without price. It sounds good. But we need to ask God, what does that look like for me? Yeah. How do I come and buy without price? Because yeah. yeah. I'm in a world that's motivated by money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
even I, I'm not going to go work for free, so I know I can't just go to someone and say, yeah, I want this, mm -hmm. but I won't pay that for it. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. In my mind, that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. That ain't bad thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> but God says, exactly, I can do just that. See? That I hold the heart of the king in my hand and I turn it any way I want. And my word, which is as a double two edged sword, cuts to and fro. Mm -hmm. That just when they think that one say no, that word comes back and cuts it. That you're going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And even for me, when out of my own mouth, I'm going to, I think to speak my fact to remind God of his fact. He said, Put me in remembrance of my word. He didn't say, Put me in remembrance of, of your past. That's right. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, Come and tell me about your credit score. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come and tell me about what your bank account looks like. Yeah. Come and tell me about what your salary cut was. Mm -hmm. He said, come and put me in remembrance of my word. What did I tell you? Right. Yes. Yeah. The thing that I told you, put me in remembrance of yeah. Amen. That you would be above only and not beneath. Amen. You'd be blessed in the field and in the city. Come on. That what's what you put your hands to? I'm going to bless it. It's going to prosper. So when you put me in remembrance of that, mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you make me a liar. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not the son of man that I should lie. Neither the yeah. son of man that I should repent. Mm -hmm. If I say, I'm going to make it good. You can take it to the bank. Take it to the bank. That I said what I said, and I meant what I said. And so that's the place where God is showing me now. That put me in remembrance. What did I say to you? Mm -hmm. And if you're unsure of what I said, be humble enough to come back and say, Lord, I really wasn't paying attention to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't trying to give you that time. Mm -hmm. My facts were talking to you, but I didn't need you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you saying? What did you say to me? Because I missed it at this Amen. place, but I don't want to miss it here. Amen. What are you saying? Amen. And what you said here, do I still have the grace? So, as I search the scriptures and think that I have eternal life, mm -hmm. I find out that the scriptures testify of him. And that the word, going back to Romans, it was Romans 15. Yeah. Romans 10, 8 through 14. I know I have to go there. I have to go there. But say, but what saith it? The word is not even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And preach means to say, to advocate, to proclaim. Mm -hmm. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, what is the Lord Jesus? This right here. Amen. 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 That if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in my heart here. Yeah. My heart. Mm -hmm. I shall believe in my heart that God has raised him up from the dead, that I shall be saved, that I shall have sozo. I should have home, healing, preservation, mm -hmm. that I can then walk in sol solteri, solteri, solteri. That's S O T I R I A. Again, that is S O T I R I A. And that's everything that pertains to what I look for in salvation my strength, my wholeness, my healing, my deliverance, my prosperity, my well being. Everything that, that Jesus died for is in there. And he says, For with the heart man believeth unto 
righteous wisdom with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So with my mouth, I'm framing my life just as Hebrews 11 and 3 says that God framed the world with his word. And I frame my world with my words. That just as when Apostle goes in and after he lays the foundation and, he, and they go in and they frame up the house. So likewise, with our words, with our confessions, that when we confess back what God has said, we're framing our life, we're framing our world. Amen. And upon every confession, every action, we're doing more. We're running wild. We're applying um, power Amen. to our to our framed world. Amen. Um, we're applying plumbing to receive spirit, light Amen. to our to our world. Amen. And then, as we continue, before we know it, there's sheep crossers, there's walls, there's um, bathrooms and the rooms and everything is coming to life. And we see the very vision come to life before us. We're like, wow. Mm -hmm. And God is like, you're no longer dreaming now. This is reality. Mm -hmm. And because you can't live in a dream. Because mm -hmm. after that, there's the next. And there's the next. Mm -hmm. And the next. And the next. And the next. Amen. <coughs> so with my confession, I will confess from a place of life, of strength, of knowing, not just believing, but knowing that from what I said, that I have already received what I said, that it's done, that I don't have to figure it out, I don't have to calculate anything, that I can just walk in this Power mm -hmm. and go and receive and do what he said I can do and what I can 